Um, hi everyone, my name is Barbara Muzata. I represent Coteva AgriScience in, in Africa Middle East. I look after the brand. I also look after communications. That's my official title. I think um, I do many other things. Omri sitting here will probably testify. Um, Lofet Agrochem <laughs> would testify. Um, I love what we do. We're in agriculture. And I especially love working um, with women and, and young people. So today is a very special day for all of us in South Africa with this first event. Looking forward to many, many more um, that will come up. So um, today I've got um, Sibongile Tele. She's a hydroponic farmer. Um, and I can't wait to hear her story. Um, I've got Ika Heng, who is an economist by training, but now she's decided she wants to be on the ground um, working and finding out more. And um, we are more effective when we work with farmers on the ground, right? And um, we are going to talk about how women can make a difference um, in farming, in food systems. Um, having worked with farmers for the past 10 years, um, wherever we are in Africa, Middle East, we find that women make up the majority of the people working in agriculture, in food systems. And um, in South Africa as well, we found that it's the same, right? However, the challenges that face women, and I always say it doesn't matter which industry, agriculture, you know, um, manufacturing, you name it, the challenges are the same. The stories are the same. Um, what we overcome is the same. And I would like to start with Usbongile for her to share with us her story, how she began her business, and where she is at right now. Over to you, Usbongile. Please introduce yourself first before you start. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And Pambili to the farmers. I'm really excited. You know, I'm surrounded with great, great people who feed people daily. So I'm, I'm excited because, you know, when she mentions the fact that it's a journey. My journey started as an accountant at Deloitte. Then there was this passion that I had growing up in Soweto, where my dad had a school. He had back gardens that he was encouraging people to say, please grow your own food. And we were taken to the school to, to actually learn about this. And to us, it was like some playtime. We never thought that the seed is being planted. And thanks to my late father, because when I left Deloitte, I said, I'm looking at the situation where there's challenges with food security. And I took up a, a challenge to say, I will be the people that will come in and do farming. And I went for a course in hydroponics. And when I got an opportunity to present to SA Breweries, they sponsored my rooftop garden in Hillbro. And people were like, why Hillbro? I said, Hillbro has got all sorts of countries in Hillbro. So I learned a lot from Hillbro because I, I came in to grow just vegetables, but I was shocked that I was learning about crop farming as well from different countries because as they come to visit the rooftop, they'll say to me, do you have this vegetable? Then I'll say, where does, does it come from? Then I'll say, can I test it and see? And I'm also a seed activist because I also collect seeds. I've started a seed bank where I'm collecting all our indigenous seeds. And with the move from that, because with, 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 with growing in, in hydroponics, we actually looked at training young women as well. And I'm happy that my sister is here from African Women in Agriculture. We met through We Connect, which is an international uh, organization where we meet as women to, to, to connect and network. And when we met, I said to them, guys, I want to expand this to a school. So we expanded to a children's home in the TLC in Ekenov, where we are now teaching young ladies to be farmers. And we have taught them on uh, uh, hydroponics and also we're looking at fish farming. And we have moved on to say they must also do organic farming. And we're also encouraging them to start in their communities to start their own farming systems, which they can use in the communities. So we're looking at Orange Farm at the moment, where we've got young women that we're teaching on, on organic farming and also hydroponics farming. 
and there's been a drive as women to say, can we encourage women? I'm seeing a lot of women here. If you've got land in your rural homes, we are encouraging them to start planting because, you know, with the challenge with Ukraine, we took it light as farmers, but it has affected us big time to say, can we grow our own maize again? Because I know like Northwest, it was our breadbasket. Can we restore that? To say, grow the maize, grow the wheat, so that we, we have access to a lot of food with this current food shortage that we're experiencing. Thank you. Thank you for that, Bongile. And I'm, I'm sure we, we come across many of these inspiring stories. I was talking to young women, young farmers, uh, before we started the session, and um, it was amazing. Unandi, sitting there, um, she actually farms snails believe it or not. Yes, there are so many things happening in our backyard in South Africa. Um, one of our women farmers, um, yes, I've forgotten how to pronounce your name. And <laughs> please stand up for the teams to see you. Um, I always say that when we have the conversation, the chicken farmer, the unlikely chicken farmer, um, that when we have a panel session, for me, it's about having everybody participate in this conversation. Um, she's producing chicken and it's currently being sold in the various townships that are close to her farm. And, um, you know, amazing things happening because of young people who've decided to take um, that step and produce food for the local communities. Um, and with that, Ikaheng, I would like to move to you and ask you to share with us what the challenges women face are as they produce food in the local communities in South Africa. Thank you, Barbara. Um, as it has been stated on this platform, women go through a lot, you know? Um, and I think for me, it's more about people's worldview or people's perspective or people's perceptions at that to say, how do you, how do you view women, you know? And your view of women will tell you what you think they're capable of. You go to the rural homesteads of KwaZulu Natal, where women are the ones working the land, but they do not own the land, you know? And if you don't have ownership, I mean, how are you going to get access to finance? You know? Um, how are you going to get access to markets? So this is just some of the barriers that we see women go through on a daily basis um, in terms of them being able to be participants or the human link from agriculture to the table. There's a lot of young people in the rural homestead that is um, who are unemployed, right? But if you don't have access, how are you expected to actually use those resources? You know, so for me, it's more along the lines of how do we get them capacitated? You know, how do we give them the resources that they need to be able to be participants in this ecosystem? You know, and for them to participate, they, they just need, for instance, training. They need the resources. They need the access, you know. So those are some of the, the issues that I've come across in, in the little time that I've spent on the field. And I'm sure I'll come across a lot more. But um, just to elaborate on some of the experiences, and they're quite beautiful. Um, there's a lady who lost her job, went back to her rural homestead, and now she needs, still needs to feed her family. You know, she decides, OK, let me just have a backyard garden and let me just do a few vegetables. And I mean, that will sustain them. Unfortunately, it happened that chickens ate um, the, the veggies, you know. Um, and this is just the story of innovation as well as resilience, because now she had to think outside of the box to say, how do I get these plants growing without these chickens accessing them? You know, um, she went to the nearest landfill sites, got plastics, you know, the plastics that we discard off. She decided to plant within those. And in the process, she learned how to get nutrients for the soil for these plants to grow. And they high rise so the animals can't access them. You know, um, in the process, what happened is that she was able to not only feed her family, but capacitate the rest of her community. Now, this particular project is basically um, feeding 50 households. You know, that's amazing. And this is all from one person's idea to say, I would like to do something you know, and this basically helped her whole community. So this is some of the stuff that women are able to do 
when they're given the opportunity and sometimes they do take those opportunities because nobody gave her you know she decided to be innovative and that's how um she managed thank you Barbara. thank you Kaheng. um there are many more of these inspiring stories that we we come across every day and um Omri, a question was asked. I know I'm putting you on the spot. I think by now you know we don't do things according to script. Um, <laughs> Omri, um, you've worked very, very long um, in agriculture, helping farmers to actually run their businesses, helping farmers and equipping them and building capacity. Um, how do you think we can, as South Africa, help women to get to a level where they are big agents of, um, you know, change in the food system. Um, thanks, Barbara. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, so, so my grandmother was a farmer. So I've got a particularly soft space for women. I also worked at Deloitte. Um, <laughs> for women in agriculture. And my grandmother actually taught me the ways of farming. Um, and the thing is, if you look at Africa, not just South Africa, Africa, the majority of farmers are women in Africa. And to be honest with you, I think they're better farmers than men. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd like it if I said that. <laughs> and I, th I think the first thing is, you know, if you think about how women mobilize themselves in the insurance industry, for example, the first for women insurance, if you look at women initiatives in various other industries, something like that's needed for agriculture. Suli, where is Suli? Is he not here? So we also run a women in agriculture project um, for, for our clients. Um, and one of the biggest things that women that would empower women more is access to finance. So my breakaway session is about access to finance and generally there's no good news there because you work with public money. But I think thinking about technology, thinking about you know empowering women in different ways, much more creative than there was before, so that you form a, a basis where people can fund into, you know, um, that I think would empower a lot of more women um, and I, I also think that women need to get a strong voice in agriculture. I think traditionally in South Africa, it was a male-dominated space. And I'm so glad there's so many of you here because this is the start. Make no mistake, this is a start. So yeah, Barbara, I think that's in short my five cents. Um, thanks for that, Omri. It, it is about empowering. It is about building capacity. Many of the studies that have been done um, show that women actually lack a lot um, of support. From an information perspective, training perspective, I always laugh about how, um, you know, as a woman, sometimes you're sitting there and um, you're thinking, I'm bored, what do I do? Maybe I should start a business selling water, you know? And um, the next minute you're sitting there and thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do finances. I don't know how to invoice. Um, how do I get more information on A, B, C, and D? And that's why as Coteva AgriScience, we, we started a project with, with Gibbs where um, the whole purpose was to help women run their agriculture entities as a business. And um, you will get to see more of this um, partnering with Food from Zansi where we share stories of some of the women who've actually been a part or are a part of this program. I see some of them sitting in this um, auditorium today. And again, walking away from script, I am going to ask one of them to share how this has helped, programs like these have helped you to actually become better at what you do. And my sister, you're sharing because it's for the benefit of the other women in this room. We want them to walk away at least with some hope that um, it can be done. San Bonani, uh, my name is Piwo Bule Shabangu. I am with the uh, Koteva Women in Agriculture uh, program at Gibbs. And um, well, it's quite an uh, informative and educational program. Obviously, 
when I say Gibbs, I'm sure you can imagine how, um, you know, uh, informative and great it can be. Um, so basically, you know, obviously we have modules like risk management, operations, marketing and sales, contracting, leading people, people development, and all those things are quite compet uh, competencies that you need in your business to run profitable businesses, to be able to manage people, work with people, and uh, just you know, uh, also know when you're going into a meeting or a, 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 a supplier or someone that you want to uh, supply your farming uh, products for, you know, which, you know what, what, what do you need? You've got the competencies, you've got, you know, you, you can't be just going in there and you don't know that much about contracting, but at least with the program, you're able to be like, okay, fine, I know I learned this about contracting, I learned this about marketing and sales, and it helps you to be market ready, to be finance ready as well. Um, thank you. Um, Subongile, you've shared um, with us the best version of your business. Um, for purposes of everyone, especially some of us who are still standing out there trying to figure out if we should come into this or not, what are the potential failures um, of running a business in agriculture and how do you overcome those? Uh, thank you so much, Barbara. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Thank you, Pua Gutle. We went to the same course online during COVID. So with women, we, we multitask and, and that's the advantage that we have. So I'm, I'm really excited that, you know, some women think when you're doing farming, it's all ribbons we are cutting ribbons there's also shortfalls with load shedding we also had challenges because with hydroponics if you don't have a uh, water supply your crops suffer so we've gone through that whole challenge where when there's load shedding we lose crops but i always say to people there's an element of resilience with women that even if you lose something you still go back and and do it and also for women who want to enter the space I will always encourage you to say, also look at your personal development as well. Learn because you are a new book, you are written, it's a page. Someone teaches you something new every day. I'm networking with other women in energy and they've actually come on board to say, let's partner and, and move you from reliance of electricity. Can we plug you into solar space? So as farmers, there's no way that you cannot be networking with other women. And for you to succeed, that network is very key because you have to network with other women and be encouraged to do more, go an extra mile, learn from them as well. Because most of the time we think it's a, it's a, a, um, we, we want to, to, to operate in silos and you cannot this time that we're in because we're looking at collaboration. Have your stakeholders list as a woman. If you need funding, who at IDC do I speak to? If I need solar um, uh, uh, solutions, who do I speak to? So that as women, we are not left out to say, where do I go? And I'm happy my brother Eric is here. These are, are some of the networks that I've built over time as farmers that we, we, we know we lose our green peppers, but we still grow green peppers. So the network is very key because it keeps you going and it also helps you to learn from other farmers to say, if I go through such a challenge, how do I get out of it? And they are there to say, this is what you do. This is how we, we managed to, to get out of the whole challenge that we face as farmers. Thank you. Thank you, Swangile. Um, Ika Heng, now coming to you. Um, what is it that um, you shared a great case study with us earlier. Um, you are on the ground now. You've moved away from Grain SA and um, you're working directly with farmers what advice would you give? How can you, I, and the next woman who's in farming um, get the respect that we deserve out there? I think Omri said it, that we are better than the men. But many a times, um, it's the men who gets, you know, head. Um, so how do we get ourselves out there and um, get people to listen to us and take us seriously? Um, Barbara, I don't have a direct answer for that, right? 
And that's because in the different spaces where we are, as I've mentioned before, perception is everything, you know. Um, you get to a boardroom and you have a female CEO and things are okay. And then you get on the ground and you find that women don't have a voice. Although they are one, they're the ones farming the land, they don't have a voice, you know. Um, if there's anything I've learned in the past few months is that on the ground, you basically need to work twice as hard just to get half the recognition, you know. I'm actually reminded of a story of one of our interns. So we have um, a development program where we put interns in on different farms so that they can get on-farm experience. And um, there's this young lady by the name Umbali. Mbali gets to a farm and obviously she's a graduate. She gets there and she's put as part of the management team. So as part of the management team, Mbali gets there, she's supposed to give directions, right, to um, the people that will report to her. Mbali is a young lady. In the Zulu culture, for instance, you're supposed to be respectful towards your elders, you know. How do you go and give your elders directions? So it, it was the past six months for her have been i don't know how to express it but it's been a lot you know um she had to literally work so hard for them just to recognize her as 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 a professional and for them to recognize her as a woman who can lead them it's only now six months later where they're able to say ah maybe she knows something you know maybe we can actually ask her something but what i noted is that we need to persevere in the little spaces where we are, in the little corners where we are, don't despair as a woman. The fact that you're not being listened to doesn't mean the next time you speak, nobody will listen, you know? Um, I think also just capacitating yourself. When you speak with authority with people, when you speak with knowledge with people, people start to trust you, you know? People start, start to trust what you have to say. And in that way, that's how you win their trust and that's how you basically get them to listen. So I think that's just my two cents worth. Um, thank you, Ika Heng. I now we would like to, as women, hear from a man. Corne, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, what is it that um, you look for when we come through with our proposals as, as women? Um, what are you looking for? And to my sisters, let's, let's keep our eyes, our ears open. And this is not for us to change who we are, but what do you, because we are special, we are different, we accept <laughs> that, right? <laughs> you're, you're trying to lead me to, to answer, I can see. You, do, you are putting me on the spot I already, I used all my English words I know in the previous session. <laughs> so I've got nothing left. Um, no, I've, uh, just I think for, for, for a kickoff, and that's a fact, it's not a joke, um, because when I was young, I wanted to fly, and the doctor certified me as colorblind, so that already roofs, rules out half of the politics of South Africa, so the other half that's remained is um, a men or women, and we really don't really look at it, uh, Omri is exactly right, in, in Africa, uh, it is mostly the women that are farming, and men did other, other things as well, also farming, but uh, it's very hard for us, we, we look at the quality of the person, um, the, the, inner, the inner part usually, because a, a person with, with guts and determination are people that will make it, it doesn't matter if you're going to farm, or remember farming is way more than only uh, being there on the land, I mean, it's, it's, that's a, a, it's a vital part, but it's, it's, there's a lot of other things that needs to happen before and after. So um, it's really always the determination, um, willpower, uh, and um, modesty, because uh, again, you can have one, of, uh, I think agriculture is the most unforgiving business the easier you can you can have a good crop it can go great and right at the end something happens like now that happened with the harbor mess or abroad or a hailstorm comes through so you must always keep mothers on your knees um it doesn't it doesn't matter what you believe a farmer learns to pray <laughs> because i uh, guess uh, there's so many things outside happening that that's outside your control but now from us we really don't look at uh, agenda that much more than the person itself um the qualities the uh, the will to succeed and uh, again uh, and i think you know you uh, you look great on the niche farming by the way but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but but there you saw how many success stories there were, and and it's it's and and, and I already said the one part and the woman mean part, but it is and it was mentioned a lot of times today before when they talk about big farmers and small farmers. I think that's a a, a rumor because um like the saffron, it's a, a quarter of a hectare, you're a big successful farmer. So even size doesn't matter. I think that's a that's a I don't know if thought about that saying. But uh, back to the woman question. <laughs> 
not not in Chevron, but <laughs> I, I had the OE on my back. I didn't hear that. Um, but uh, bottom line, now, now it's, it's, it's really about the inner being, and it is already proven. So I don't have to put myself at this spot. It's proven they they are very very successful uh, women. Thank you, Cornet. You so, won't put me on the spot again after so, this. So so. <laughs> So, so Corne, Corne ran out of English data bungles. Um, so to the communications team next time, please give him more so that he can present um, on the spot. But thank you so much for that. Omri, um, we've got two minutes, I've been told. Is there any, um, you know, wisdom, nugget of wisdom you can share with, with women in farming? Um, 30 seconds and then we'll move on to Ika Heng. In the end, it's about competence. It's nothing, it doesn't matter what color you are, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're from America or England, it's irrelevant. It's about competence. So working on yourself harder than even you work on your business will make you succeed in the end. Okay, okay. 30 seconds from you. Um, from me, I would say consistency is key. The other thing would be, as women, support each other, you know? Um, build these networks where you're able to communicate and learn from each other. It's very important in terms of helping you grow. And uh, Spongile? Well, thank you. With me on, on the ground, because my drive is always being building communities one day at a time. And in your building, you use your networks to build and, and have your stakeholders list. Because we cannot be building alone as women. I, I, even the male farmers that we have, I, I've, I've actually tapped into that network and say, how do I go about, how do I connect to this province? Who do you know in that province? So in our building, let us build together and change communities because it all go, goes back to how do we impact communities in our farming as well? Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, as, as, as we close, what, what I take away from this conversation is that it takes a special personality, right, to be a farmer and especially for a woman who goes into, into agriculture. And um, competence cannot replace, cannot be replaced by anything. Um, you either learn and do things properly or there's no shortcut. Um, I think we came up with a title the other time, which was Humble Hustlers, because we wanted to make sure people knew that agriculture is not for sissies and that you have to work hard. So before you even go do your nails, ladies, you have to really dig deep and work hard um, for you to be successful. And from you, um, Sbongile, collaborations um, from you, Ika Heng, as well, we need to build together for us to be agents of that change as women. And then the networks always come through for you, which is why as part of the Gibbs um, program, Coteva has also collaborated with an entity called She Builds Her Future, where we now are saying, you've done all this training, you've networked, what's next? Can we have the likes of um, AgriSA, Lowfeld Agrochem, Food from Zansi coming on board and giving other skill set that you do not learn in class. As the minister said earlier, you can never know it all or enough, but learn from the others that have gone ahead of you. And with that, we come to the end of our panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you.